Hey everybody, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com and this is my look at the Kyosho Scorpion XXL VE. At 24 inches long, it's considered 1 7th scale and it is two wheel drive. I'm a big fan of its semi-retro look, but of course what really matters is what's underneath. Thankfully, removing just four body clips allows you to take this whole complicated multi-piece body and roll cage assembly and just rotate it right on up. The overall chassis layout is just like a mid-motored electric 1 10th scale buggy. The middle is dominated by a very large and generous battery tray which can be reconfigured to accept different styles and sizes of batteries. The motor measures 44 by 70 millimeters, not including the heatsink fins. Kyosho had it ordered up through Team Orion specifically for this vehicle. The ESC on the other hand is something that we've seen before. This is a rebranded version of the Hobbywing SC8 waterproof sensorless only model. Continuing with the waterproof theme, the receiver box is waterproof as is the standard sized servo. Now that seems a little small for a car of this size, but it does look like they have optional large scale servo mounting points in case you want to upgrade. The suspension looks pretty well engineered with mostly composite parts, but a couple of aluminum braces added in there, and they use captured hinge pins and adjustable turnbuckles. Shock towers are also composite, as are the big bore shocks, which in turn are not threaded and require the use of preload clips. The story at the rear is similar but a little bit more simple, and the wheels are driven by hardened steel dog bones. Speaking of wheels, they look really nice, again going with the retro styling, and they use 17mm hubs and a monster truck size, so aftermarket replacements should be easy to come by. The tires have a great multi-use tread, but the rubber compound might not be soft enough. Up front again, 17mm hubs are used along with a standard diameter, but the front wheels and tires are very narrow. These look like they're scaled right up from a 10th scale. The RTR's so-called synchro controller is actually pretty nice. It feels good, feels pretty high quality, especially for an RTR unit. And check this out, it has an LCD screen. This has multiple model memory, you can set EPA and dual rate, and it also offers simulated ABS braking. The package does include some basic tools, but for spare parts you get some ball ends, servo horns, spring preload clips, and mounts for an optional 1 8 scale buggy rear wing. The stock electronics are designed to be run on 4S LiPo, giving you a top speed of about 38 miles per hour. That's with the stock gearing which keeps the motor temp at a nice comfortable range. What's not comfortable at all though is the lack of traction with the rear tires. Thankfully these are not as bad as the HPI Baja rear tires, but they're not too much better. They're bad enough that it was actually not fun to drive the car on any surface. I'm going to rant on this for a quick minute because it seems like most people don't have the guts to do so. It is not acceptable for manufacturers to ship and sell vehicles that have terrible tires. I don't care if it's an RTR. It should be ready to run, not ready to throw away something that you paid for and replace it with something else that you have to pay for. Many experienced hobbyists nowadays say, well, you have to re-loctite everything and you have to change your tires and you have to change your suspension. You have to change everything on an RTR for it to be any good. And I believe that's just a ridiculous attitude to have. This car here is difficult to drive at all. It's downright frustrating. And the sole reason for that is the rear tires. Nobody under any circumstances should accept this as being okay just because it's an RTR. When you spend hundreds of dollars on an RC car, it should be able to drive somewhat decently on some surface, and this does not. All right, 40 bucks of pre-mounted truggy tires later, it's rant mode off. With such a simple change that absolutely should not be required right out of the box, the buggy actually became pretty fun to drive. Even with the mid-motor configuration, it has plenty of rear traction, and you can kind of drive it like a scaled up 1 10 scale that's moving in slow motion. Except it's not moving in slow motion, it's top speed being higher than just about any ready to run 10th scale or 1 8 scale buggy that's out there. The car now drives very predictably, and I'm happy to report that that small little servo that's included seems to be plenty strong for this big car. The suspension setup feels a little bit stiff for general running, but if you're going to be doing any jumping, it's actually pretty good. The car is very smooth in the air, and if anything, it has a slight tendency to nose down. With as much weight as it has on the rear, it's still compressing the rear shocks a lot more than the fronts, so it's important to stay on the throttle in the air. The size of the Scorpion XXL is a nice compromise. It fits between an 8th scale and a 5th scale, but it feels comfortable to drive it around on a track made for 8th scale cars. Let's see how well it holds up to some abuse.
that last one was a breaker. I'm not surprised or disappointed at all though. That was a heartbreaking crash. From about seven feet in the air, all of the weight of the vehicle went straight down on that one corner on a hard surface. But I did experience some annoying, unexpected failures along the way. Right there, the car spontaneously spit out one of its rear dog bones. A screw holding the camber link on just came right out. Another thread locking failure led to my motor mount coming just a little bit loose and taking off just the tips of some of the teeth on the spur. Thankfully, the pitch is coarse enough that it's still able to drive just fine like this. Various other hardware did start to back itself out though pretty quickly. So sadly, this is one of those RTRs where you really need to thread lock everything out of the box. Another one of those things a lot of people are used to that they shouldn't be. The car should be assembled right the first time. So you gotta do your thread locking and you've got to change at least the rear tires. It's annoying and should be a little bit insulting to the average consumer, but once you take those steps, you do end up with a pretty cool large scale buggy. Including the price of a set of rear pre-mounts, you're looking at a vehicle that's about 600 bucks ready to run now. I think that's still a pretty good value for how much RC you get here. I do not expect this to take off as a new racing class, but as a cool looking, pretty big novelty two wheel drive basher, I really think it works. My only real concern with the Scorpion XXL is parts support. Right now, any shop that sells Kyosho stuff should be able to order up any parts for this car. For folks in the US, A Main Hobbies has almost everything in stock as of the time of this video. But those parts are pretty expensive, and I'm not sure how long they'll be on the market. Right now, I'm happy with this car, but it's probably not something I'd want to hold on to for the long haul. Well, that's it for this review. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was informative and or entertaining for you. But if it wasn't, please do hit thumbs down on the video bar on YouTube. Or if you did like it, please hit thumbs up. Either way, it helps me a ton. Thanks again, and I'll catch you later.